Good morning everyone, welcome to our PP video. Today we will talk about a topic that is foreignization and domestication in an Indonesian novel called Laskar Pelangi and its translated version Rainbow Troops. But before that, I would like to introduce our group members. First, Hana Fifah Meraini, and then Fairunisa Chandra Pastiti, and then me, Rizka Amaya Purnama, and the last is Lili Novianti. Before we start our presentation, I would like to tell you about the organization of the parts of our presentation today. First, introduction that will be delivered by myself, and then literary review and research method that will be delivered by Koyerunisa Chandra Pasiti, and then discussion that will be explained by Hannah Afifah and Lily Mafianti, and the last conclusion that will be delivered by Lily Mafianti. So let's start our presentation today. As we all know, communication is a part of our daily life. Without communication, we cannot deliver our speech, our thoughts, our ideas, or our information, even our opinions. So in short, communication is a process of understanding between individuals in which the participants not only exchange the ideas, opinion, information, but also create meaning. People are using several ways to communicate with each other. There are two types of communication. The first one is non-verbal communication and the second one is verbal communication. Non-verbal communication is a type of communication in which the participants are not using language to deliver the, their message. It refers to any kinds of movement from the body, that is eye contact, body language, hand gestures, postures, etc. In contrast, verbal communication is a type of communication in which the participants are using language to deliver their thoughts. It can be in the form of written and spoken. Pinchak suggests that translation is a process of finding equivalent in target language from a short language utterances. The most common definition of translation is a process of translating words or text from one language to another. In short, translation has a role as a bridge to connect one language to another. When doing translation process between two languages, a translator is not only dealing with the language itself, but also the culture from both languages. Sometimes, the culture from both languages are totally different, so it is quite difficult for the translator to find an equivalent meaning from both languages. Because of that, the result of the translation may be different. In this case, context plays an important role. Why? Because without understanding the context, it will be difficult for the people in the target language to understand the culture from the, from the source languages. Therefore, domestication and foreignization is useful in this case. This paper video is made to clarify the use of foreignization and domestication in a novel called Laska Plani, which was written by Andrea Hirata and its translated version Rainbow Troops. So Laskar Plani is a novel which tells about the struggles of 10 students and their teachers to maintain their dreams and hopes in a school named SD Muhammadiyah Kantong, Bangka Belitung. It was published in 2005 and three years later, it was adapted into a movie called Laskar Plani with Riri Diza as the film director on September 26, 2008. And then it was translated but, uh, into English by a, a translator named Angie Kilpey. So, this paper video is conducted to analyze the expression in the source language into the target language of this novel. Now, let's move on to the next part, which will be delivered by Khairunisa. Okay, thank you, Priska. Next is about the research method. The method applied in conducting this research is literary research and the assembled data were analyzed by descriptive analysis method. Observation to the Laskar Pelangi novel is done as well. This research tries to analyze 
the culture program by using foreignization and domestication theory. Now, let's move to the literature review. First, I want to explain about translation. According to Bislin, translation is a process in both oral and written form that transfer thoughts and ideas from the source language to target language. Next is about culture. Bunjoro Ningrat argues that culture is a system consists of beliefs, values, customs, behaviors, and artifacts of a society that being transmitted from generation to generation through learning. Edward argued that culture is a complex world which includes knowledge, beliefs, art, moral, custom, and any other capabilities and habit acquired by a woman as a member of society. So it can be concluded that culture is a developing lifestyle which is on together by one community and being transmitted from generation to generation. Next is about foreignization and domestication. According to Venuti, foreignization is an ethno deviant pressure on the cultural value to register the linguistic and cultural difference of the foreign text send the reader abroad. Domestication is an ethnocentric reduction of foreign text to target language cultural values send the author back home. Next is about relation between translator, culture, foreignization, and domestication. A translator is responsible not only in the linguistic element but also the cultural values in the languages that are in flow. Therefore, Lauren Penuti in his book in 1995, A History of Translation, introduced two strategies that are foreignization and domestication to solve this problem. Foreignization is a translation strategy to maintain the information from source text in the target text. So the reader will aware of the cultural differences. It will make them to realize that they are reading a work from a foreign. Domestication is a strategy to make the closer between source text culture and target text culture. It not only makes the information from the source text lost, but also the strengthness of the reader in the target text. There are two advantages when the translator use foreignization strategy. First, the translation product have to introduce the uniqueness from other culture. Second, it help the reader to increase their knowledge. In contrast, foreign session will give a strong effect to the reader because they are not familiar with the source tech culture. Domestication will give a pleasant mood for the reader because the word in the target tech is familiar with their daily life. This technique is also easier for the translator because they don't need to add additional information like a footnote or glossary. In other hand, domestication creates a different mood from the source text because the originality is shown less. The reader will not realize that they are reading a translation product. Thank you, that's enough for me.
and the next part is discussion that will be delivered by Hana Afifa and Lily Novianti. So, we are going to enter the next part, which is discussion. As you can see, there are lots of sentences which share the similar term or trusted the term in the video. And the first one, I'm going to talk about foreignization. Okay, the first term is dasar drama pramuka. Dasar drama pramuka is a collection of rules about 10 promises of an Indonesian scout. It is applied for a pramuka penggalan whose level each whose level of age range from 10 to 15 years old. Uh, other scout in the world have their own oaths or laws, but this term dasar drama pramuka is only applied in Indonesian scout. The act of translator for keeping this term as it is in the translated novel uh, makes the novel feels like strange or foreign to the uh, to the reader abroad and this act is called foreignization okay now we are going to enter the next term the next term is lebaran lebaran or Eid al-fitr is one of the feast day for a muslim it is celebrated after ramadan or fasting month and as already known by many people Indonesia has the biggest number of Muslims settled in it, no exception for, for people in Blito. And so that's why they are celebrating Lebaran as well. The term of Lebaran is only exist in Indonesia, and other, other Muslim countries have their own uh, term for calling it al fitr The act for maintaining this term or Lebaran in the translated works makes the, makes the novel feel strange or foreign for the reader abroad. So that's why it's foreign Okay, now we're going to enter the next term, which is Dumuluk. Dumuluk is a traditional theater developed in South Sumatra. It was created in Palembang, one of the cities in South Sumatra. The word Dumuluk itself comes from the main character's name, whose name is King of Dumuluk Johari. This place usually performed in many events like wedding party, charity events, and hitanan or circumcision events. This entertaining place is performed to give teachings or lessons as well as advice and information. The act of maintaining this term in the translator works makes the works feel foreign or strange to the reader abroad. Again, this is the another example of foreignization. So we are entering the next term. The next term is jilbab. Jilbab is a headscarf for Muslim women. It is used to cover hair, neck, chest, and other upper bodies, which are considered as a lot or should be covered. Jilbab or headscarves is common in Indonesia since the majority of people here are Muslims. And covering body is one of the Muslim's obligations. The word jilbab here is maintained or not translated into the easier English terms and the act of the translator makes the novel feel so foreign or strange for the reader abroad and this is another example of translation. Okay, now we are going to the next term which is Pamanda. Pamanda comes from the word Paman and the suffixes Da or Da. Paman is Indonesian word for uncle and suffixes da or da states two things. First, it states the honor and the respect from the speaker to the addressee, and it states the family bond between the speaker and the addressee. Here, Bumus called Paharpan as Pamanda because she respects Paharpan as the leader of the school. The act of the translator for keeping this term uh, makes the translated works feel foreign or strange to the reader abroad. Therefore, this is precision. Okay, now we are going to another term, which is Jala Kerbau. Jala Kerbau, or Archipiterus Japanicus, is a bird which is included in Jala Familia. It is widespread in East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Indonesian archipelago in the west side. It has medium size and covered in gray to almost black feathers. It has particular chirp, but it can also copy another bird chirp. Because of its chirp, this bird is sought after by many people. From this sentence fragment, we can know that the Jala Kerbau term is maintained. The egg of the translator makes the works feel foreign or strange. 
Therefore, this is another example of polarization. So now, we are going to the last term in polarization, which is Ibunda. Just in Pamanda's case, Ibunda comes from the word Ibu, means mother or man, and the suffixes da or da. The suffixes da here states the respect or honor from the speaker to the addressee. The egg of the translator for maintaining this term in the translated works makes the works feel foreign or strange. Therefore, this is polarization. That's all for polarization. The next one, domestication, will be delivered by Lily Nopianti. Okay, now I'm going to talk about domestication. The first term is tepung beras. Tepung beras or glutinous rice has been known as the natural beauty ingredient treatment for centuries. It has many benefits, particularly for brightening effect on skin. Many Asian women use this, probably until today. The shifting from bedak tepung beras to powder makeup changed the sense of this term, make it more familiar to the readers abroad. This is the example of domestication. The next term is emban. Emban, a Japanese word for servant, is used in the original text by the author. This term is not really common in Indonesian daily term. This term is compatible in the text talking about kingdom, just like this fragment of sentence. Instead of maintaining the term, the translator chose to translate it into servant, a word which erased the unique sense of Indonesia. The reader then feel more familiar with the word. This is also included in domestication. Next term is rata-rata air. This term is an Indonesian term. This term sometimes used for subject like sport and PE. This term also used to express something very common or nothing special in it. Instead of maintaining this term, the translator translate this term into wasn't peculiar or just so. It makes the reader easier to understand the meaning of the text. This is also included domestication. Next term is air jeruk sambal. Jeruk sambal or citrus amlikarta is a kind of orange that is usually consumed by Indonesian people to enrich taste of their food such as soup and soto. This kind of orange is not consumed directly as fruit or juice because the taste is sour. This plant only grew in tropical area. That's why the translator translated it into orange juice because to easier the readers abroad to understand the meaning of this term. This is also included domestication. The next term is perdu apit apit. Perdu is woody plants that has branches and grew low near the ground. There are many kinds of perdu or clam. One of them is bamboo. The translator translate perdu apit apit into bamboo because bamboo is well known by most of people around the world. So the translator changed it to make the people easier or the readers easier to understand about this term. This is also included as domestication. The next term is otot kawat tulang besi. Otot kawat tulang besi is an Indonesian term which means that someone has a very strong body, has muscle as strong as wire and bones as strong as iron. A hero that has the strength is Gatot Kaca from traditional puppet story. The translator changed it into strong body because the readers abroad don't have a hero like Gatot Kaca. So the translator make it more familiar to the readers abroad to understand this term. This is the example of domestication. The last term is alat kam. A kam is an alternative therapy from Middle East, Egypt, and China. 
the tools that used in this therapy is a cup that heated and then being tapped to the patient's body. It is the tools that is explained in the original text, but then the translator changed it into the tennis ball holes because they don't know about the cup. But then it translated into tennis ball holes because this alternative therapy is not known well by people abroad. So to make it more familiar, the translator make it into tennis ball holes. This is also included domestication. That's all the explanation about colonization and domestication. Now let's continue to the next part. That is conclusion. The use of some words that is categorized as foreignization makes the original culture of the original book look prominent. It makes the reader realize that they are reading a book from another country that has different background culture. Foreignization also makes the, the reader travel abroad from its origin to understand its culture. So that's all of our presentation today. Our group realized that we made a lot of mistakes, so we are looking forward for your corrections, critics, and suggestions in the comment down below. Thank you for watching our video, and see you on the next video.